Thank you for tuning in to Investment Insight presented by McKay Wealth Advisory. My name is Hayden Prophet, and today we're joined by Brent McKay. Yeah. And Brent, one thing that's new in the investment market is this this term. I guess it's really my generation more than yours. I'm not saying you're old, but like I'm old. this using this in fear of missing out. Like it's yeah. it's a real thing. Like if all your friends are at a party or all your friends are at a football game and you're not there, then you know you're worried. Like oh, what what's going to go down there that I missed out on? Yeah, that's one of the things that if you look at, um, one of the craziest things is if you just observe 13 and 14 year old girls to 20 year old girls and the amount of selfies those people will take because it's a selfie culture. And the same thing is true with, um, with investments is once people see an investment is doing well, they all want to pile in. And we saw this, you know, back with the Reddit culture. If you look at, um, meme stocks, these meme stocks, like, you know, like really like during COVID, Nobody can go to the movie theater. No one can leave their house. But somehow AMC movie theaters is able to stock to go up so high and appreciate when they're not showing movies because they're not making new movies. Everything's going on Netflix. Everything's going on Apple TV and Prime. And so you see this a lot in the investment world. And it's been true forever. Um, I remember in my career when I started um, in 2007, Everybody loved emerging markets. You know, um, this idea of all the money going to China, China is the future. That narrative was so prevalent in our culture that America is going downhill and China is going to be in charge of the world. So in 2002, three, four, five, six, and seven, we saw tons of money flow into the Chinese market and it heavily outperformed the US market. And so I remember, and I believe the statistic is true, is when my first year I started, 90% of every dollar that went into a 401k, went into an emerging market stock. And of course, 2008 hit. And what was the worst performing investment asset class? Emerging markets. Emerging markets. And so one of the things that you have to fight as an investor is, if you're always trying to do the next hottest, craziest thing, it might work short term. But long term, when you're looking at investments, you know we wanna buy an investment where things are on sale, where they're cheap. You know, As we're shooting this video, emerging markets, um, aren't super cheap, but small U.S. companies are. Smallest U.S. companies trade at about um, 12 and 11 times earnings, which means you know, large U.S. companies trade at 17 times earnings, which means those small companies, the ones that grow with the new ideas from a profit calculation perspective are you know, 40 to 50% cheaper than their large cap competitors. And so when we look at investing, we want to buy the assets that are out of style, that are um, maybe the cheap, the on sale, the, the you know the discount rack. You know, it's like you think about it. Um, back when this TV series came out called Storage Wars, and one of my really good friends owns a bunch of storage units. So before, when they did storage auctions, nobody showed up, but the minute Storage Wars came out. They had thousands of people. They have a huge party. Everybody's here to try to get a good deal. Well, the good deal was not buying an investment after the Storage Wars TV series came out. It was before. Because supply and demand are true when you want to buy stuff when they're cheap. So when you see people are selling their stocks or they're selling their bonds, they're panicking. That's when you want to be the buyer. Because it's easier to have a strong stomach than to be a rocket scientist. You know, we actually, in our office, because where we're located, we actually deal with some rocket science. And they tend not to be great investors. Now, I can't get a rocket over the moon. But I believe we can figure out when something's cheap. And if you do that based on a mathematical perspective of what's there, it's important. But it's really important, you know, a lot of these people that are doing the Reddit craze and they're buying those stocks or they're doing the meme stocks, they're not investors. They're gamblers. Right. They're flavor of the month. Like yeah. it's, it's whatever, you know, it's like this month, do I want Rocky Road ice cream or do I want chocolate chip cookie dough or do I want vanilla? And, and the thing is, if you enjoy gambling, so Hayden, if you really love going to Vegas and you, as part of your enjoyment of your life, like going up and down your money, that's okay. But don't try to bring that for your serious investments. If you're looking at your life savings, your, your nest egg, don't risk it all on some flavor of the month. You know, invest for the long term. I know it's boring. I know people say it all the time, and it's not something that people love hearing, but the truth of it is, is it works. 
it will work and uh, or has worked in the past and so that's one of the things we always see is people always want that new craze that new stock or that new thing and valuations are what you want to look at the big thing when i was in public accounting was it was right after the game stop uh yeah when it got shorted and then everybody started buying it and driving the price up and the financial statements were in between year end and the subsequent event footnote so they had to disclose this huge big thing but i remember what you were saying because i had buddies that bought a lot of GameStop because they said oh we got on reddit and invested in it yeah and and, and, and look you can make money that way i'm not saying you can't make money if you're if you buy in before the ponzi scheme starts and you sell it before it's over it's okay but ultimately if I'm going to buy a company or if we're going to pick an investment, I want to know that I can hold on to a company for 10 years and make money. I want to know that if I'm buying an Apple computer, they have a product that people are willing to pay $1,400 for. And next year, $1,500. Yeah. And that's what you really want to do. So one of the biggest things, though, is it's an emotional thing of the fear of missing out or the fear of not being money. And that's all over the market. Because a lot of times when the market goes down, people are like, oh, I hate the market. I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling. And then as soon as it starts coming back, oh, I don't want to miss out that game. Yeah. Try to control those emotions when you're investing. This fear of missing out, this really is a real thing that we see in investing. And uh, thank you for taking some time and talking about it with us today. So awesome. thank you for tuning in today, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.